ஸ்தூம் பூணமத பூணமிதம் பூணாத் பூணமுதட்சியே பூணய பூணமாதாய பூணமேவாவசிஷியே ஓம் சாந்தி சாந்த் சாந்தி பிரம்மானந்தம் பரம் சுகதம் கேவலம் ஜானமூர்த்தி வந்தவாத்தீத்தம் ககன சதிஷம் தத்துவமசியம் ஏக்கம் நித்தியம் விமலமச்சலம் சர்வீசாட்சிபூத்தம் பாவாத்தீத்தம் திரிகுணரம் சத்குரு தம் நமாமி ஓம் எலுரேஷன்ஸ் ஃபுல் சத்குரு who is brahman the giver of supreme bliss embodiment of pure consciousness one without a second vast as the ether infinite eternal beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme preceptor yoga vashishtha upasham prakarana section 13 and the topic is mastering the mind for attaining enlightenment liberation same old topic the mind is ever distracted by its concepts of what is desirable and what is undesirable it develops impressions of attachment towards the desirable objects and creates imp- impressions of hatred and dislike towards the undesirable ones if these two forms of concepts are overcome then bondage in this world process ends in simple terms there are five kleshas five afflictions source of all afflictions is ignorance avidya next the effect of avidya is egoism asmita if asmita can be mastered and rendered tas- transparent if ego becomes in you like a like something you hold in your hand to support yourself like a big stick but a stick made out of pure transparent metal crystal if asmita ego becomes so transparent if the ego that is not transparent creates ego inf- inflammation and oozes out <laughs> viruses which contaminate your mind allegorical way of describing but in order to control asmita klesha in order to transcend your ego make the ego transparent klesha next klesha is called raga attachment next one is called dvesha hatred based on raga dvesha karmas develop karmas bring embodiment and you love your embodiment to such an extent that there is a constant fear of death that's called abhinivesh klesh i'm not going into the, all those points but here the point is raga and dvesha that's the most highlighted aspect of every 
person's daily life things you love <laughs> you are enjoying the moon from the clouds hardly you looked up another cloud came in <laughs> you cursed cloud <laughs> you spoiled my my enjoyment So, you created in your mind agitation. And it goes on day by day, things that delight mind develops immediately the will, may I have those things. things that do not delight you mind develops an immediate reaction may this disturbing element get away from my eyes forever go to hell <laughs> and that that type of experience is even with the closest personalities around you near and dear ones sometimes you don't say it but internally you mean it <laughs> and as long as you live mind works with raga dvesha attachment and hatred <laughs> no matter how much vedanta you may study because <laughs> this <is> practical world <laughs> you may have filled your mind that the mind has to be always equal but to sit upon a chair that has a head so it <laughs> or thoughts or You simply become agitated. You look for another one. Why I'm saying that? <laughs> to prepare your mind to understand. From theoretical way, your mind must be very clear to understand, like mathematics. The practical way, you have to have a lot of patience. an artistic heart to to understand the mistakes that occur in your personality and view your mistakes with a different vision just like a tree in tree so many things develop and but the tree has not passed any examination has not gained any phd it tree remains simply relaxed learn lesson from the tree <laughs> learn the art of being relaxed and firm with the root root is more important than anything else the root is who am i and on that basis also allow yourself to be shaken throughout as you live you go on learning lessons and you you learn lessons when you are flexible you think i have no everything all is brahman so have no need for anything else knowing which everything is told so point is that practical reality should not be abandoned and real and spiritual movement progress does not stop you from practical reality rather encourages you to face your practical challenges with a joyous way just like the tree faces winds coming 
and becomes stronger at the root. The same adversity and prosperity becomes a nourishing process for the soul to be rooted in its higher reality, in its swarupa, the essential nature. It's a satchidananda. Now put it more in a simple way. As long as one is gripped by ignorance, not enlightened, Raga and Dvesha, attachment and hatred, they play a great part. Likes and dislikes, gain and loss, pleasure and pain, all these pairs of opposites summed up into simply two words, Raga and Dvesha. In order to be enlightened, allow your raga to go into infinite level. As long as you are putting your raga to finite objects, it's not infinite. In simple way, When raga is handled in a spiritual way, it becomes anuraga. It leads you, anuraga means ordinary raga, you find something very joyous, you work hard and you gain it, you possess it, you are happy, but happiness lasts only for a few days. Now you are securing your happiness by keeping the object or the person closer to you and your mind goes on working how to secure the source of happiness. If it is an object, you keep it in, a, in your nice place where it's, it's very safe. <laughs> Use all the modern equipments of... <laughs> of watching who is looking at you. <laughs> so you spend time <laughs> looking, looking at your advanced technology. <laughs> Did anybody dare come towards that my object? So every morning you have to look into all the reports. All that I can go and develop with that, but the basic part. <laughs> when you have spiritual movement, you, in simple terms, you begin to love God. God who is the reality behind all. That in that love, in the beginning it's a little glimpse of that love. When you have it, you unload your mind. Instead of putting it under lock and key and, <laughs> and going after protecting it, now you are relaxed. So your love is leading you to increasing love, called anurag. Until love becomes, raga becomes of infinite measure. That means you are attached to God. All worldly attachments, they are, called, they are like strings. That Yashoda had to capture Krishna. She used all the strings and she couldn't catch. But when she surrendered to God, she was able to tie him up 
you put all the strings together. <coughs> That's then again the storyline. There are so many Puranas go on this. Raga, when sublimated, becomes love of God. Desha, when sublimated, becomes neti, neti, negation of the world process. Raga movement, all is God, all is love. Instead of one or two things, all. Dvesha, instead of repelling one or two, all of it. Because the reality is Brahman. Nada. Nada exists. Nothing exists. So. <laughs> So that way you have, if you have put Raga and Dvesha, treated Raga and Dvesha in that way, you attain enlightenment. This is brought out in a storyline with Jarasandhavad. Jarasandha was a demoniac king who had kept so many kings to be for sacrifice. Yudhisthira wanted to get all those kings to attend to his sacrifice, which is Rajasuhi Yajna. In order to do that, Jarasandha had to be destroyed. And um, without going into the big story, Bhima. <coughs> Firstly, Jarasandha has been described. He was born in two slices. And the slices were put together by a, a demoniac witch. <laughs> Your ignorance has put together Raga and Dvesha. <laughs> Therefore, you are embodied. Two slices. Bhima's divine strength has to break, separate. But separate in such a way that Raga goes towards infinite. Raja, Raga goes in one way, all is Brahman. Dvesha goes in all way, in other way, nothing exists. So, one slice thrown this way, one slice thrown that way. Jarasandha was killed. Now come back to very simple way to understand. Both inclinations of the mind have very great importance in your practical life. Things that are not beneficial for you, you have to take them away. Your mind must have that strength of negating, detaching. At the same time, your mind must have a strength for attaching. But when you get into a spiritual way, you detach from all those associations that degrade your mind. Attach towards that type of association that leads your mind Godwards. All this goes on until the goal is reached, where there is neither attachment nor detachment. Because attachment reaches the stage of being attached to God alone. And its effect is friendliness towards all. Matri Bhavana. You are attached to all. We are all loving souls. Or nothing exists. Brahman alone is. These are two aspects of the same reality. So that's how Raga Dvesha has to be handled. Otherwise, 
raga dvesha go on developing based on in, inflated ego sometimes things that are good you develop dvesha towards them <laughs> things that are bad you develop raga towards them. when that happens call moha you get so conflicted confused is tarah kuti gigar you put a baby snake <laughs> the mind in the masses is ever tossed by the ideas this is good and i must strive to attain it this is evil i must fight to reject and this goes on the day you find that there you have no challenge you become bored what has happened what's needed first to both aspects whenever you see raga developing in your mind switch your attention that what you are loving in the for through the object the god so therefore now any relation you are developing it will be a relation of inspiration and similarly when you develop a negative A, a negative person with bad qualities come to you, to you and hatred comes in your heart but look at the person you see his eyes he is divine and what are you hating is his sickness not him this is hard to understand <laughs> but that is the key of the highest culture that humanity can possess you don't hate negative people you hate the disease but don't hate the patient <laughs> all souls here in this world are patients try to find what can we do what led them to be such miserable state helpless state those who are patients they are not under their control they are simply just don't know what they are doing how to bring their mind to a healthy state that should be the real urge within your within the heart of one who is advanced so all situations of raga and dvesha have to be handled in a divine way agitated by the currents of attachment and hatred the human mind is like tender blossoms of a tree that are ever agitated by every breeze that blows which is a poetic way to describe that you every day small little things happen and the mind is constantly being shaken in a in a way that injury develops in your mind let me remind you of what you have heard in the gita talk one needs to have two types of approach vahirang external approach find a source of satsang the spiritual leader guru pranam learn the art of adoring the guru which is old style satsang namaskar prostrations 
and second point is called jignasa when you approach spiritual personalities and come under their guidance don't keep your mind on in a closed being devoted to great personalities perfectly good but your fair devotion should not be inactive type of devotion your devotion should allow you to gain insight so whenever you have problem with your understanding seek help is called jignasa have an inquiring mind and that's what you see arjuna and krishna krishna says all those things but still arjuna goes on <laughs> vashishta says so many things still rama goes on ask <laughs> and the relationship remains very joyous you have to understand that and the third point is seva pranam jignasa and seva seva means serving the guru serving the guru is not an individual service because gurus to make guru happy is not an easy thing <laughs> 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 whoever competes with the guru he, he becomes the source of real happiness <laughs> implying in the spiritual relationship guru disciple relation is meant to bring out the divine potentiality in the disciple The guru is great when the disciple becomes disciple says am brahmasmi <laughs> guru say tattvamasi thou art that and disciple goes through the process and comes back am brahm they smile at each other <laughs> that's the best seva <laughs> but in order to do that you have to live your life with be good do good philosophy because in order to want to assimilate spiritual knowledge there must be integral development integral yoga in life and it should become a source of inspiration for others all that comes into that seva term so the all the three is called vahiranga external but while this external process goes on the three internal processes <laughs> go on developing faith and discovering within your own heart the strength of faith and be surprised how <laughs> what faith can do wait watch and wonder but if faith is not awakened or strengthened then wait watch and wonder there is for <laughs> sensitive mind for healthy intellect the entire world gives you inspires you to have faith look at a seed how does it grow in spite of countless ado- negative situations a tender shoot 
finds vulnerable little holes, goes through it, breaks down barriers, turns into a tree. I'm just giving you figuratively to understand. <laughs> and so much is happening in your own body. So much is happening in your unconscious. So much is happening in the world around you. All that is happening by whose power? God. So once that subtle idea that you are supported by God comes, that's the central core of faith. Because now there is no end to that strength. That strength that is behind the entire universe that you, you know of is there in the core of your heart. And you have to relax and let it express. But in order to do that, satsanga, japa, prayer, facing your challenging situations in a positive way, all that is required. Because every healthy movement is a progressive movement. You simply don't hear, oh, faith can do everything. So from tomorrow, absolute faith, not little, absolute. That, that is completely diluted statement. So faith, next point, tatparata. <laughs> Be alive. If you are alive, so many things are happening in your body. Your eyes are flushing, your ears are listening. Your Skin is stuck in the air. You think that nothing is happening. <laughs> you are alive. Means every moment. A very joyous atmosphere is around you. And you are aware of it. Put it in a more practical way. You become aware that life is presenting opportunity after opportunity for you to turn, move Godwards. And that type of vigilance comes in your mind. You are living your life, how to face adversity, how to handle prosperity, both are to be utilized, negative, positive. Because God is behind it. Nothing should make you feel in a state of despair, broken hearted. Then that type of process is, is called apramad. Your mind is constantly awake. And third point is samyam. Now, <laughs> control your mind and senses with the three da movement. Dhamma, Dhamma is control. Dana, be charitable, magnanimous. Daya, be compassionate. So if you are doing that, the whole process is yama. And if you do some yama, it's yummy experience. O Rama, <coughs> these are the qualities of a Jeevan Mukta. 
I will give you the original verses of the of Yoga Vashishtha. Nirashata, Nirbhayata, Nityata, Samata, Gyata, Nirihata, Niskriyata, Samyata, Nirvikalpata, Dhritir, Maitri, Matir, Tushtir, Mridu, Mridhuta, Mridu, Bhasita, Heyo, Padeya, Nirmukte, Yeyatishthati, Apavasanam. I'll tell you the meaning. <laughs> Nirashata. No, no expectation from the world. Absolute desirelessness. No craving for anything. All this you have to understand with a mature mind. Nirashtam doesn't mean that now you have you are hungry. Sit with say, oh, I have no desire now. <laughs> you don't practice nirashta in that way. <laughs> you practice nirashta profounder way, you don't want to be embodied and be constantly dependent upon the world to give you happiness. And that world is transient. So that understanding has to go on developing. In order to develop that understanding, practical realities must be handled in a practical way. If you don't handle it, then you can't grasp it to seem contradictory. <laughs> but you have to understand it. You have to do every detail in handling your practical realities. In order to come to the state of internal understanding, sanamati, where, all, where you develop a profound understanding as by realizing who am I, all desires are fulfilled. If they are already fulfilled, then you are over, over eaten it. You would have no more desires. Nirachata. Next word, nirbhayata. Fearlessness. Fear of all types. Mind becomes so negative. If mind is not handled well, then people go on, they're afraid of, they begin to see shadows even when there are no shadows. And fear comes from every every direction. <laughs> the goal of life, Godward movement, is characterized by nirbhayata, fearlessness. Not even be afraid, have fear of death, because death is for your body. You have been enjoying your iPad and one day iPad dies. <laughs> that should that put you to the state of feeling absolute <laughs> loss. So that type of understanding has to develop towards your own body, towards your own personality. So no matter how things happen, the real, the I in you, the soul in you, is not going to perish. 
to understand more in a extended way a jiva individual soul is brahman reflecting in the mental process like the sun reflecting in a jar of water the jar is perishable water is perishable the reflected sun being the sun the reflected sun will not stay as a reflection but did it die it has it is nothing but the sun so that type of godward connection has to develop put it more in a people who are living with sentiments that the whole world can become your enemy and you may find yourself doing so many negative things that you wouldn't dare come to god for protection <laughs> but understand no matter who you are no matter how many negative we have done god is omnipotent but his omni there is exception to the rule he cannot abandon any soul not the tiniest soul the sun cannot abandon its reflection because that so that sense has to enter your heart that i am not abandoned look around you people abandon each other they don't understand even though in a loving relation they are far out and in that state people go through immense despair repair your despair <laughs> <laughs> there is someone who will never forsake you <laughs> someone is be is the absolute god himself boundless love <laughs> therefore through little puja through little surrender through little japa allow the strength of faith help you to face challenging situations <coughs> and develop a sense of rasa in facing problems and surviving the problems resolving them moon emerging out of dark clouds shining bright but big this obstacle in your enjoying rasa is rush rush <laughs> the more patient <laughs> and gentle you are steady greater is your possibility of enjoying spiritual progress but when you begin to rush to bring a haste in your personality then that becomes a big interruption in your rasa movement figure out rasa by rush <laughs> you are more human <laughs> third possibility is rasa <laughs> you be tied up by ropes <laughs> rasa is rope ro rasi rasa karmic karmic ropes she went through all that on the near near by at <laughs> fearless this now i have to be little brief 
<laughs> Next word called nityata, sense of eternity. <laughs> Mind is always, oh, how much time has gone now? How was this only time to live? 50% of life goes into such sleep. Little time left, so much goes in disease. And so forth. Instead of living with that type of mind, things are constantly running away and you are always shaky. Develop a sense of eternity. You are the sky. All things happening are clouds. We enjoy their movements, but don't become identified with them. Nityata, sense of eternity must develop deep in your heart like a blossom. <coughs> Samata, mind must develop it equanimity, to understand, even though externally things seem rough, changing, deep down, the reality does not change. In a cinema show, stories go on changing, the projected images, the screen is not changing. So no matter what you see on the screen, you see a vampire with a lot of blood coming out of the teeth, <laughs> or see beautiful blossoms. Understand behind them both, there is just the screen. The reality is the same. So don't be shaken. And that reality is you not far out, the real I am. That's called the Nit Sabata. God is from every source. Jyata, Jyata term is Jyan, to have wisdom, enlightened mind, to have that knowledge knowing which all is known. By realizing Brahman, all your urge to know comes to infinite fulfillment. Nirihata, absence of agitation, agitation that creates jealousy, hatred, etc. Absence of that type of agitation. Niskriyata, actionlessness. I am not the doer. I am not doing anything. The sky doesn't do anything. Just stays stretched. <laughs> Sun doesn't do anything. Simply goes on shining. But through limited minds, Every moment the sun is doing countless things and yet it's not doing anything. That's where your goal is. As the soul, I, are, I am Brahman, this Kriyata, nothing. There's no action going on, nothing is accomplished. Brahman alone is real. and put it in a more practical way, the more you are internally calm, cool, relaxed, greater is your activity in a precision, in a qualified way. You do things in a more qualitative way, not quantitative. 
On the other hand, your quantity increases beyond your imagination without losing the quality. So much so, if someone suddenly says, you did you do all this? Very simple, say, I didn't do anything. This spontaneity made you do all those things. So when you are in that state, any praise comes to you on the basis of how wonderful things you have done, makes you feel humble. That's called niskriyata. Next one, saumyata. Be always gentle-faced. <laughs> Learn from the deer. Dear, dear. <laughs> Don't develop a frowning face. Next one, nirvikalpata. Don't live with a mind that goes on creating castles in the air. Dhritir. Next quality, firmness. Un being unshaken. Next quality, matri. Never develop the idea that some enemies are waiting to grab me. <laughs> An idea of unfriendliness. And therefore your mind goes on working. Whom should I bless? Whom should I curse? Rather, that's already, we have explained that point. <clears throat> Next is Mati, understanding. Same thing like calling Sanamati. Sabko Sanamati De Bhagavan. May God give good understanding to all. Good understanding leads every soul to discover I am Brahman. In that movement, all problems vanish. Next point is to still absolute contentment, the feeling of you are being showered by divine grace. So why should you have to go and jump in like a frog? <laughs> I'm joking. Life has its own challenge. It takes time. But these are your ideals to attain. An inner sense of contentment. Living in the world while living in a tent. <laughs> Will God realize it? You have eternal tent. Content. <laughs> Next quality, Mridutha. Mirtha is tenderness. <laughs> Always understand, dealing with others, people go after facts. But they don't understand how that fact will work in the heart of the person. But in spite of all that, nature has given certain exceptions. You understand your baby. Even if he goes wrong, say, how cozy.
<laughs> you, you feel you face the abrupt activities of a baby with a tender heart. Why shouldn't that heart be towards everybody? Why should you lose grip of that tenderness? That's the advanced state. Always understand, you can't suddenly develop it, but if you follow through, that's the task of heart will develop within you. That will not have any the room for wishing ill will to anyone. Sarve bhavan tu sukhina. Next, tender speech. Automatically, your <laughs> words play a tremendous part. And the greatest indication of one's spiritual advancement is how he uses his palabras. <laughs> there lies the greatest test of greatness. And there are some more qualities, and we'll keep it for tomorrow. <laughs> Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukmiva Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshyama Amritat Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyant Ma Kashtidukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Namah Shivaya Hari Om.